in this uh, in this lesson we will build a baseline model for predicting the uh, price of a car so in the previous lesson we um, saw how to train a linear regression model and what we want to do is we will actually use this code that we wrote in the previous um, lesson and now we will use it to to build the baseline model so for that what we need to do is uh, let's take a look at uh, our data frame Okay, so what we have here is a, a data frame from which we want for now for the baseline model extract uh, use all the numerical columns. So we can again take a look at uh, the numerical columns we have, the types, and we see that um, the numerical. Uh, so we have uh, engine HP, uh, engine horsepower. We have a number of cylinders. We have uh, miles per gallon on highway. We may uh, we have uh, miles per gallon in city, and we have popularity. Right, so we have these uh, five. Right, so let's uh, let's build the model using these uh, these five. So for that, uh, yeah, what we can do is uh, let's first to write uh, create um, a list with all these uh, feature names. So let me just use columns here so here we have uh, engine horsepower right? and we have engine cylinders and then we have uh, these three right so we have five of them um and uh, yeah, and remember, if we want to get a subset of columns, uh, we just use um, so we put this subset of columns in a variable called we call base. Base uh, just basic uh, basic features. So we have them. And uh, what we need to do now is to extract uh, the the values from here. So let's do that. So now. Okay, so let's do, let's call it X train. Oh, first, uh, we have this DF train base, right? And we use values to extract the NumPy array. So we can put this as our X, X train, X train. And then we have uh, Y train already. Right, so we have that. And what we want to do now is train a model. So we use train, uh, train linear regression. Um, train. Yeah. And we have a problem. So we have nuns here. And the reason we have nuns is if you remember, so let's just uh, take a look at this. If you remember, we have some missing values. Um, so we can just quickly check if there are some any missing values. Yeah, so we have missing values in uh, engine horsepower and then engine cylinders. So we need to do something with these missing values. So the easiest thing we can do with them is just fill them with zero. Fill an A zero. And then now if you do this is now again and sum. It should be nothing, yeah. And by filling missing values with zero, we kind of we make the model ignore these features. So let's say we have uh, we have our model. Our model is again G uh, for X E, which is uh, in our case we have uh, five features, right? So let's say we have this uh, W zero, then. Uh, uh, X I one W one, then uh, let's just use in our example uh, um, two features, right? And uh, let's say that this variable here, this value here is missing. So what we can do is we can just say, okay, let this value be zero. And when we do this, what we get in turn is uh, uh, W0 plus 
uh, xi2 times uh, w2. So effectively, we just ignore uh, that this feature exists. Right. So zero is not always uh, the best way to deal with missing variables. And if you think about this, let's say if uh, this uh, this is like, for example, could be uh, engine horsepower, right? So it doesn't make much sense for um, for a car to have zero horsepowers, right? Uh, typically, there are more. Or in case of cylinders, like there cannot the engines with zero cylinders don't exist. So from common sense point of view, maybe replacing it with zero doesn't make much sense. But from practical point of view, when it comes to machine learning, sometimes zero works fine. And uh, of course, in the previous uh, lecture, um, we saw in the homework as well, how to um, how to fill missing values with uh, non-zeros, with mean values. It just makes the process a bit uh, complicated that's why we'll just go with uh, with zeros so let's do that so we again extrain and now our x train shouldn't have any missing values and that's why training finishes so we have uh, so let's just write like that so we have our bias term and we have uh, our w now we can uh, use these weights to make predictions so let's say we can um, now, for, for now, just apply the same model that we just trained to the same data set, to train data set. And for that, remember, we use uh, matrix multiplication. Um, so we just multiply our uh, train matrix, um, uh, feature matrix with our W. And we get the predictions. And we forgot uh, the device term. So. We get the predictions and let's call it y underscore pred. So these are our predictions. Now we can plot these predictions to see if they look similar to the uh, original, to the target variable that we want to predict. And for that, uh, we can use uh, the same uh, histogram um, uh, function from Seaborn that we used already. So it's hist plot. And then uh, the first one will plot predictions. And then the second one will plot uh, the train variable. Okay, so they now they, they have the same colors. So let's uh, change it a little bit. So color could be, um, let's say, first um, red. Uh, the, the second one be blue. So now it's better. We can just. Um, little bit fewer bins. Um, let's go with, um, I don't know, 50. And we can make them a bit more transparent. Alpha, like the alpha is the variable, is the parameter that controls how transparent these colors are. So they are now more transparent. So here, what we have, uh, so these are uh, target variables values target and these are predictions so we see that uh, uh, the shape of predictions is like that it it's off like it's always uh, less you see that the, the peak is here so even peaks uh, of the distributions don't match so it always predicts in many cases it seems to predict a smaller uh, value than than it actually is just by looking at this chart, uh, at this plot, we see that uh, our model might not be ideal, but we need to have an objective way of saying that uh, is this model good or not good. And when we start improving our model, we want to make sure that we indeed improve our model, not just by looking at uh, the charts. And for that, in the next session, we will talk about root mean squared error, which is a way to objectively uh, evaluate the performance of uh, uh, regression models.